Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about Linux distributions as we tend to do on this channel. But those of you that watch my vlogs may remember that sometime last year I talked about the idea of bringing in a Linux Distribution of the Year award. And I've been thinking about what this video might look at, uh, look like, you know, a Linux distribution. What is the Linux distribution of 2017? And I don't think I can pick a single one. So today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the the uh, Linux distributions that I tried out and uh, what I thought of them and sort of some of the more uh, noteworthy distributions that I think are um, are worth trying out. But the reason I decided against bringing in a, a Linux distribution of the Euro War, there are a few reasons. The first, of course, being that Linux distributions are, of course, rather subjective. Like, for example, if you're putting an, um, you know, like a friend or someone that isn't particularly tech savvy onto Linux for the first time, you don't really want to run them with Arch because, as you know, as featureful and as lightweight as Arch can be and uh, as all of the things that Arch can do, as a first Linux distribution to someone who is not particularly technically savvy is probably uh, about as close to a wrong choice as you could make. And, um, you know, non-tech savvy people probably would rather not have large updates uh, particularly regularly as well. So something, for example, like an Ubuntu long-term support release or Linux Mint, for example, might be more suitable for them. Um, and... Um, and even when it comes to sort of more intermediate users and more dedicated users to Linux and open source software, is that there is a big um, uh, variety of the kind of uh, workflows and, uh, and and demands from a distribution that you can't say that one is better than the other. Yeah, you can say that some distributions are more useful to more people, um, and this is where sort of the shortlist comes from, but really if you were to pinpoint one linux distribution for all use cases it would be near enough impossible and it would be kind of um underwriting a lot of good work or at least sort of undervaluing a lot of the good work done by um by by the others as well because uh, you know it, again it is particularly subjective but the main reason is what would constitute a win for one distribution over the other and what i mean by that is one of the technologies that we're seeing develop rather rather quickly is um snaps and flat packs and 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 universal package formats which i am really excited about i've been looking um and playing around with them quite a lot over the holidays both both flat packs and snaps and i've got to say i do feel that there is a lot of potential because the idea that it could ma uh, make life so much easier for developers to then pack your packages to package up an application and then just ship it off to uh one or you know at the very most two or three packages um basically where it, you know it's 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 a bit it's still in a bit of a new situation so you do have sort of like two or three competing standards of what a universal package manager might look like but uh, hopefully, either one will will, will sort of uh, uh, prove to be a uh, more universal standard, I guess. But also, as well, um, uh, given that you're talking about snaps, you're talking about flat packs, and you're talking about app images. Um, if you were to package up your application for all three of them, then that's that's uh, significantly fewer than the goodness knows twenty you know, package standards for all the Linux distributions about nowadays. But if snaps or flat packs or heaven forbid app images were to um were to take over as a dominant format, then you know, almost all Linux developers surely would then either develop for their core distribution or for the applications on top of that in, you know, snap or uh, flat pack or uh, or even app image. And um even I now use the Caden Live app image um uh, video editing software because it's the easiest way to get the most up-to-date version of Caden Live with all of the libraries bundled with it, which is really useful for a video editing program because Caden Live is one of that, one of those applications that, that just breaks if you don't have the right versions of all your codecs and all that kind of thing. And it it is sometimes it's it's known as not being the most stable of applications. And now I can just download an app image from CadenLive.org. Um, it'll be the latest version, but if that for some reason doesn't work, if there's a regression or something, then I can go back to an older app image, and it's as easy as selecting one file over the other. 
So that way, when they bring out a new app image, I can switch over to that one and see if the regression has been fixed then. So yeah, you like with app image uh, nowadays, even you know now, it offers a great deal more flexibility in a user-friendly way than um, even standard packaging. Um, because I use, of course, Ubuntu Mate, and I do like my GTK desktops, which is always going to be at odds with Caden Live. Now Caden Live runs incredibly easily, smoothly, without a you know a a, a glimpse of an issue. Uh, on KDE uh, and, and Plasma Desktop, but app images give it a nice little sandbox, nice little, little protected environment, nice little safe space, so that KD, Kden Live can do all, all of its little things, and you don't have to worry about whether or not you can use a uh, KDE or Plasma-based environment. So I've definitely got to say, I don't know which of the app image package formats it will win. I've got to say, like, I've had really quite good experiences with with all three with app image with snaps and with flat packs um with flat packs they tend to be more federalized so you're looking at flat hub as like a primary um repository of, of flat packs but then there might be more that come uh, come around sooner uh this is good and bad in some ways it in it's, it's good in in that you've got a universal package manager which um where developers for any application can then sort of either make their own flat pack um, repository themselves and, and everything can be done on themselves or they could probably uh, contribute it to uh, like a flat hub or one of the sort of the app stores for flat pack and then of course you've got snap which is less federated it's it's definitely like an ubuntu based project that is you know, sort of like ported out really well on other distributions as well, but you don't get like a choice in repositories in the same way that you do with Flatpak, or at least it's not as easy or designed like that. Um, and uh, and with Snaps, you've got you know that central Snap Snapcraft uh, repository, and then everything sort of branches out from there. It's a slightly different way of doing things. You end up in a very similar place at the end. Snaps are easier to use. Flatpaks give more power to the wider community. It's less centralized, uh, but for all of the ins and outs of it. Um, both of those um, formats are, are, are in very early stages and there's nothing to say that in a couple of years time what one can do the other can do as well. With app images what they basically do is they get the application and all its dependencies everything associated with it and patch it up in a big like ISO file or a you know like a like a, a, a container uh, file and um, and then you just you um, make it executable and double click on it and it's easy. App image I think is really really good for programs that need to be portable, programs that need to be like for example with my Caden Live situation, uh, ones that aren't necessarily an integral part of the operating system but if you just want to bundle something and ship it out the door as a developer, app image man, that is really impressive and it, it works. Um, it, yeah, it works. I've had issues with the OpenShot uh, app image but I think to be honest, I think that's an issue with OpenShot. You know, it, it, again, video editing software, very complex. And that's one of the reasons I'll never really talk it down too much is because admittedly, yeah, you know, video editing software, very buggy in general, but that's because it's so complicated and everything with it is complicated. And, you know, a little change over here, if, you know, makes a big, big change over there and all that kind of stuff. So video editing is definitely like, you know, you, you, you know, like the people that are working on video editing on Linux, these are top top tier developers as it were so so I'm very grateful for what comes down and when it comes to video editing it's getting better and better every year better and better now I can't in in, in good conscience and I have done professional video editing work using things like Caden Live but I can't in good conscience go to a professional video editor and say Ch check out Caden Live it's better but it's catching up year on year which is great um, but it's still a long way before it's truly considered um, anything that you can uh, take to the, you know, like any, anything you can use on a grand professional level. But um, but it's getting there, and it's getting there, and it's impressive. And, it, you know, it can do stuff of that level. It's just nowhere near as easy, and you have significantly fewer options. Although with open source projects like this, and I especially apply this to things like GIMP, there are a lot more options than first meets the eye. It's just sometimes uh, these programs are not necessarily designed by the same people that design Adobe and therefore uh, workflows are significantly uh, different. So anyway, I'm getting significantly side railed, but I think you guys know that this is this kind, that, ki that is this kind of video. Anyway, the reason... <laughs> The reason, well, almost ten minutes in, that I am not doing a Linux game of the uh, Linux distribution of the year award, is because I firmly believe that in the next couple of years, Universal Package Management will um, will progress to the point where it doesn't matter. That's that's really that is the heart of the reason.
pick whatever distribution you like. There's plenty of good ones out there. So here's my short list of good ones. So what I'm running on this machine here that's, that's dealing with the sound right now is, um, assuming that the sound for this video comes out all right, otherwise, uh, otherwise not, um, Ubuntu Mate 1710. Good old distribution. It, you know, it, it's, a, it's a steady distribution that you can always rely on. It's reasonably user-friendly. It's traditional and reserved in its UI approach. It's customizable. I run it. It's the distribution that I, I, I stick on friends and family laptops when they want to get into Linux or when they want to just, you know, when their hard drive, their Windows hard drive is broken and they're not forking out like 90 quid for a new version of Windows. So they'll, you know, they'll just use Linux if all they do is word processing and internet browsing. And that's how I actually end up converting a lot of people I know onto Linux is that most people, they don't care what the the... Uh, the operating system of their 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 laptop or their computer is it's just something that is 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 outside of their interest zone and um and and they'll break a a hard disk drive like they'll either install some malware that does it in for good or or it'll just run you know it'll, ju it'll just wear down you know hard hard drives wear out a lot of people buy second hand laptops that I know so they the hard drives there are already worn down quite a bit by the time they get them so a lot of times um I'm asked just to to replace a hard drive and put on an operating system that doesn't cost 90 quid so I pop on um Ubuntu Mate and they're always happy I've never had a complaint never had an issue um, I've pushed my installation here quite a lot, and I found a few minor bugs. But you have to push it; you have to, you know, to really find it. And I think part of it, part of it, is I get this feeling that Mate is it like it's adding more features, and it's developing, and it's continuing. It's not just keeping GNOME two alive, but it's developing it and it's bringing it uh, along, you know, in. Um, keeping it up with the other desktop environments and it's probably maybe about the third most co you know sort of sophisticated and full featured desktop environment out there admittedly you could argue it's got more features than gnome but gnome definitely has like the development oomph behind it that being said mate is certainly um you know in a competing uh, in a competing place but uh, and the thing is with ubuntu mate as well and I will say it uh, again. A lot of you know, a lot of divi a division on the topic, but uh, aesthetically, it's very dated. I think now at this point, it does. It looks like a distribution from quite some time ago. It runs like an app, you know, like runs like anything fantastically modern. But the uh, you know the sort of the the, the gradient, um, the buttons and everything like this. This does, you know, it, it. I think it could use a sprucing up. Um, and this is something that anyone can do themselves. It even includes a few decent themes in the uh, in the Ubuntu tweak tool, and I quite like the the mate dark theme actually again it does look a little old school but it looks good so um but yeah uh ubuntu mate if you just want something that's no nonsense and gets out your way does the job if if you're the kind of person that just wants to get the job done to fill that particular trope uh, it's like um yeah like ubuntu mate long-term support if you want the least hands-on experience. The uh, software boutique is great for newcomers. It allows you to install Synaptic or the Ubuntu Software Center as well. It doesn't seem to come with Snap Support or Flatpak out of the box just yet, I think, if, if memory serves correctly. But either of those are as, in, as, as, as simple as installing it on um, any other Ubuntu-based distribution on the command line. Um, you know, installing for Snap, for example, is just installing Snapd, and it's the same as, um, as as doing that on Ubuntu as it is for most other distributions. Although Snap Snapcraft.io, I think, provides the best instructions for how to get snaps on, on your distribution. Uh, next one that I was pleasantly surprised by was Pop OS. Again, another Ubuntu based uh, variant. This one's with GNOME. It uses a reasonably vanilla GNOME desktop. It adds in a nice looking theme, a real nice looking theme, actually. I didn't. Um, I didn't really know what they do in terms of the aesthetic when it comes to Pop OS, but that theme does actually give it a nice bit of identity. You know, it gives it a nice, nice identity. It, um, everything in in Pop OS, I think it uses the elementary store as well, which is also really good. Everything about Pop OS is great, except for they don't have a notification um, system tray icon thing. So they don't have a place where the your, your Dropbox, Dropbox or Steam or Skype icons go, you know, the little notification icons. Uh, Gnome, the desktop, has depreciated it. So other distributions like Ubuntu, like Solus, have brought in old add-ons to actually make sure that you've uh, they've reinstated the system notification tray. However, 
Pop! OS hasn't. So GNOME has taken away the system tray. Pop! OS has, has decided not to re-implement it with an add-on or anything like that. Um, that can be an issue if you're running something like Dropbox or... Uh, and I think Dropbox is the biggest um, issue I've had with it. Everything else can be accessed through the uh, through the dock in GNOME. Uh, but the GNOME developers are considering um, the system notification tray to be out of, you know, legacy, basically. But it's not. Like Steam, Itch.io, um, Simple Screen Recorder, uh, KeePass X. Like, there are loads of applications that use the, um, uh, the notification tray. And I think GNOME trying to... to Force develop, you know, force developers not to use it is. I, th I think, in in a way, they're getting ideas above their station because I don't think the GNOME Desktop have that kind of pull to actually make notification icons legacy. I don't. I, you know. So anyway, we'll see that battle carry out as well. And I'm a bit, um, I'm a bit annoyed at GNOME for that because outside of that, they've got a pretty good like desktop environment. I mean, it's not the lightest. It's by no means the most lightweight, but it looks nice. It doesn't, you know, it, 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 I think it works broadly quite well. Like, I mean, I am a bit traditional in my uh, UI paradigm, but being able just to push down the Windows key and start typing the search, the panel on the left-hand side or the, the dock on the left-hand side is fine. Um, it looks nice, which always helps. Uh, it's not uh, easy to break, you know. It's, it's not like new newcomers to Linux might get into the GNOME desktop and they might, you know, accidentally change any settings. It's not overly complicated. It's not difficult to use. Some places it's not super intuitive, but it's a desktop environment that tries new things and they're going to get some things wrong from time to time. Everyone, you know, everyone that tries new things ends up getting something uh, wrong and... Um, and I'm hoping that you know GNOME can stay the course on that one, but or correct the course on that one rather. But overall, GNOME's a great desktop. Pop OS is a great distribution. Um, so uh, so yeah, definitely that one kind of definitely that that one impressed me. And it's nice to see a six monthly release uh, based on Ubuntu as well. What I mean by that is when you get like Elementary, when you get Linux Mint, there are a lot, of, there are countless desktop Linux distributions based on Ubuntu. And the majority of them seem to be based on the latest long-term support of Ubuntu. And this is a very clear reason. It's easier to make the distribution. It's, um, it's, they, it tends to be like the more popular variety or, or people tend not to mind. It's got a great support. The base is supported far beyond its years as well. Um, it's, you know, so it's, yeah, it's, it's easier to maintain and it's, it's you know it's, it's it works better as a one size fits all kind of distribution. But that being said, you're left with older repositories at that point, especially towards the end of the two years. Now, I installed um, Linux Mint Mate onto my laptop, my second machine here, and that is uh, based on the latest long term support of Ubuntu. And I did use Snap to install the Brave browser. And I think, or did I, yeah, and I think I might have installed a couple of flat packs on there as well, just to try out what you know how easy and feasible it is to run snaps and flat packs and app images all on that machine. And I think I've run all three without a single issue on Linux Mint Mate eighteen point three. Now, if it becomes the norm in the next couple of years that uh, applications for Linux typically get released on snaps and flat packs and app images more more frequently, more often, then um, Linux Mint is a really good option for a distribution, for a hands-off distribution, for a distribution where you set it up and then you just forget it. Uh, Linux Mint Mate is a distribution that, that, that did wow me quite a lot this time around as well. It wowed me because it, well, it runs, it runs quite light as well, which helps on this, this Triton laptop here. Um, it gives you a great choice of window managers. So if you've got a screen where screen tearing is quite an issue, you've got you can select a window manager which is specifically designed at tackling screen tearing. If you want desktop effects, if you want something lightweight, you have I think you've got like six different options, seven different options for a window manager in uh, Ubuntu Mate in Linux Mint rather Linux Mint Mate edition and. Um, what I do like about Linux Mint as well is is that, and this also applies to Cinnamon, is that they've got they've got a, a, gr a good understanding of the end user. I'm a little bit confused why Linux Mint, a often touted as user friendly distribution, has a quick launch tray for the terminal, which that one that one did. Um, raise an eyebrow actually, like you know Linux Mint, it is it's really user friendly distribution. I love it. 
both in Cinnamon and in Mate, they have a terminal uh, icon uh, as a quick launch icon right by the uh, the tablet menu. Now, for any kind of experienced Linux user, that would that would be a no brainer. That would be a very useful thing to have right there. For you, you know, like your your you, you know your newer to Linux user or your or your power you or well like any Linux user that doesn't want to that isn't particularly interested in using the terminal would would not really find that particularly interesting and they might you know and, and some users who who are new to Linux who are a bit bit worried about Linux on the terminal you know that's that's often some of the questions I get asked is well you know Linux is all well and good but don't you have to drop into the terminal whenever the slightest thing goes wrong and so forth and then putting a terminal icon right up on that taskbar in Linux Mint is um I don't know again it's it's the only eyebrow of mine that's raised is you know why is a um Linux Mint got a terminal uh a terminal icon right in the in the taskbar. But outside of that, all those little things, they do really well. They install Redshift um by default. So Redshift for, um is an application that um it sort of color balances your screen. So um it adds um uh, like screens usually have um you know they have like a blue light. Uh, and what happens is the blue light, um, it almost sort of tricks your brain into thinking it's sunlight and therefore it keeps your, I think they're called like your, alca- your ar- arcadian rhythm going uh, past um, when you really want to be considering sort of winding yourself down in the evenings. So Redshift, what Redshift does is that throughout the day it adds a red glow or adds a red tint to your uh, to your monitor um, as the, you know, as the, uh, in relation to sort of the sun and the daylight. So it makes your light the the tone of light a lot more red in the evenings so it doesn't sort of effectively keep you up all night and it's really really useful it's great for dealing with eye strain it's great for for you know if you have trouble staying up all night on your computer due to the blue light or whatever it's great red shift is is a nice way just to 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 um yeah, just to, to sort of deal with the blue light out of the screen and they install that by default. It's definitely something that more and more people I know that I talk to day to day are definitely sort of concerned about and considering is 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 having a uh, a redshift type application on both their phone as well and I think uh, uh what's the uh what's the open source one available on the phone? Red Moon I think it is. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, Red Moon. It's available in the Fdroid store. But uh, yeah, and I do recommend it. Um, and I guess just to round off the the list, of course, Linux um, Mint Cinnamon is uh, is also on that short list. It runs with uh, it requires a few more system resources than the Mate edition, um, but it's it is smoother. It's slightly more polished. It looks a little bit more modern. Everything's a little you know everything takes a f- a, a, a few a fewer number of steps as it were. Mate is a bit more old school in. It's designed as a desktop environment. Cinnamon is the updated, you know, it, it's the new generation, as it were. It's been around long enough now that I consider it stable enough to play, uh, for you know, play all kinds of games and, and edit all kinds of video, all that kind of stuff. It's been stable for quite some time, truth be told. And um, it doesn't run, you know, it's, it, it runs faster, I would say, than something like GNOME. But um, it, it isn't the most customized one. It doesn't give you the most options. You can't choose... For example, the window manager in um, Linux Mint Cinnamon. But then again, it's kind of sort of de- designed that you don't, you know? Linux, Linux, I don't know, Linux Mint seems to be like the advanced, the slightly more advanced and customizable version of Linux Mint. Uh, so, yeah, the Mate, is, the Mate version is like the more advanced version of Linux Mint. Cinnamon is like, um, sort of like the, the flagship basic model. But if you need to tweak anything, Mate is the way you're going to want to go. You know, if you're going to want to tweak the window manager or 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 or, or anything like that, you want to bring in sort of extra applic. You know, if you want to switch out some of the system apps and all that kind of stuff, I suppose it seems that Mate might be the uh, the desktop environment better designed with that. Whereas Cinnamon does seem to be like it seems to have a few of the similar goals in regards to um, to uh, removal of features to make things easy and streamlined. Although that being said, Cinnamon is not light on features. It has things like hot corners, um, and it has a decent amount of themes available for it as well. Maybe not as many as your, your uh, as like uh, KDE Plasma or Mate or Gnome or whatever, but it's certainly um, it's certainly got a few. Cinnamon is a it's a really really good window manager. Uh, the 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 only issue uh, is a really good desktop environment. The only issue is that if your window manager doesn't necessarily play nice. Um, it's it's a little tricky to swap it out, but you say you know you can say that about GNOME, um, 
uh, and most things as well. So it's yeah, it's like cinnamon little. It's like it's like mate, but just slightly less customizable. And I think it's in GTK three as native, which is um, which is that too. But I think um, mate is pretty much three uh, GTK three uh, ready anyway. And then yeah, the final one on the list, of course, it's Solus. Solus is fantastic. It really is. The big difference between Solus and the rest is that. A, it's not based on Ubuntu. B, it's a rolling release, which means you upgrade uh, Solus. You basically keep upgrading um, continually. Um, yeah, um, i got to admit, I tried Solus Gnome this year, and I felt that although it was a really good distribution, it was definitely the the, the weakest out of the three uh, Solus versions. You've got Solus Budgie, which by far and away is the one I had the most success with. It's, it's very similar to Linux Mint's Cinnamon, like it is a desktop environment built for purpose, built for the distribution, with the distribution in mind. It's not super customizable because the people designing the distribution kind of know how they want it to look and how they want it to function. So Budgie is um, similar to Linux Mint Cinnamon in that reg regard, but I and I did find the um, Budgie desktop to be the best experience as well. I mean, I did find the Cinnamon desktop in Linux Mint to be the best. Um, experience as well but when it comes to but uh yeah but i did experience a small amount of screen tearing on my laptop which is why i decided to go with with mate no it wasn't um oh no there was yeah there was a slight screen tearing issue with mate where i uh needed compton so i had the um linux mint mate version on that but um but also i was quite happy that um Linux Mint Mate did actually run, uh, uh, you know, like a, a noticeable uh, fewer resources than, than Cinnamon. It certainly was a little easier on the on the laptop because it is a an entry level laptop. But with Solus and Budgie, um, it ran incredibly smoothly as well. So um, it's uh, not only is it rolling release, so you've got uh, updates and you don't have to worry about release versions and all that kind of stuff. But you also it has good support for snaps and good support for flat packs as well. And I'd imagine it wouldn't have a problem with app image as well. So if you want something to install and just update from time to time and never forget forever, like Solus could be quite good. The only reason I, I, I hesitate is that Solus is rolling, which means there is this um, marked higher chance of something going wrong during an upgrade process. Uh, it seems to be lesser and lesser as the years go on. Now, as the upgrade, you know, as more and more upgrade processes seem to seem to go by, um, each one getting, you know, so, or you know, the process becoming smoother, as it were. And um, and I don't, I don't think I've ever broken Solus with an upgrade, and I don't think I've ever heard of anyone breaking Solus with an upgrade. So this idea that rolling releases are less stable is definitely not as apparent as it was several years. Well, you know. As it was several years ago, something with something like Arch, because Arch run a lot newer versions of all of the packages, and they have a much wider uh, library base. You do often find that uh, that the rolling uh, nature of Arch can sometimes uh, be a bit of a challenge. But uh, but with Solus, it seems that. Um, because the distribution itself is quite controlling of all of the packages in its ecosystem, uh, it, it seems that there's like less room for, for errors to creep in. Um, yeah, but I gotta say, yeah, Solus is pretty good if you're willing to put up with the with the rolling release. Um, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I might actually have, have, have to try Solus for a year and uh, and see how it goes because. Whereas in in the short term, Solus has been you know near enough perfect in you know, but. Um, but living with Solus as a rolling release month in month out, that's interesting. That is interesting. Um, so that is by no means comprehensive. There are going to be definitely a few other distributions that you guys will want to recommend in terms of a shortlist. So really, ultimately, when it gets down to it, my shortlist is Ubuntu and, and Solus. Uh, of, or Ubuntu LTS, Ubuntu... Um, you know, current and soulless. Really, uh, everything else in a lot of cases is just the um, is the just the window dressing. For example, I tried out um, Kubuntu, the KDE variant of Ubuntu. And if you're not a fan of GNOME, you're not a fan of what Ubuntu and Canonical have done with the GNOME desktop. Kubuntu is like just as good. It really is. Like it doesn't have an Ubuntu branding. It does kind of feel like you've got the base of Ubuntu and you've just stuck uh, Plasma and KDE on top of that. But it works, and it works well. And if you like Plasma and KDE on top of Ubuntu, that's the distribution for you. Um, I also did try out KDE Neon, 
But to be honest, I know a lot of you guys quite like it. But I have never managed to find the... To, to sort of... Um, I feel there's a degree of cognitive dissonance there for me between having the up-to-date version of KDE and Plasma but having the long-term support of Ubuntu. It's like you... In some ways, in my mind, it can make sense. But, like, if you're using tools outside of the Plasma desktop, you're going to be using sort of, like, older tools, I guess, as well, as well aren't you? Unless, of course, you use flat packs or snaps, uh, in which case then you obviously get the, the, the version in, in the snap repository or the flat pack repository. So... I suppose it could it could work in that regard, but I think KDE Neon to me seems like. Well, I mean, a lot of people have gone to KDE Neon because it seems to have fewer uh, issues and errors than, say, Kubuntu, and maybe that's because, um, you know, it, it being part, it's, it's kind of part rolling in a way because you've got the long term support of Ubuntu, but you've got the very latest KDE desktop, so errors in the KDE desktop space will be fixed probably rather rather expediently, especially um, considering that the distribution is like a, a KDE flagship. Um, but I've had no issues using it, and it's like uh, Kubuntu but with a newer desktop environment, and um, I think that some of the desktop might, might go wrong a little bit more frequently, but then again, errors might get fixed more frequently, so it's, it's, a, it's a swings and roundabouts, isn't it? So... I did like KDE Neon, but I can't get past it as a flagship Plasma desktop environment. It definitely seems it seems more of a showcase um, distribution than anything else. But uh, that's not to say that it isn't good. It's not to say that it can't do the job incredibly well. It's not you know that's not to say that it isn't a high quality product. It's just for me the purpose of it isn't to serve a community. The purpose of it is to show off. Uh, KDE Plasma as best as it can be, the newest, the brightest version that it can be. And KDE Neon, I mean, it does that, I think, in my opinion. But if you want something that fits the Ubuntu groove a little bit more um, s s with the rest of the family, then Ubuntu, uh, Kubuntu is just as good. Zubuntu is fine. Um, Lubuntu and Lubuntu, Lubuntu Next, I think, is, is also a bit of a, uh, a hidden gem there. Very, very lightweight. And um, once LXDE, I assume, will get retired, uh, LXQT, that's one to watch if you've got an old laptop and uh, and want to use it. And to be honest, like, you know, if you get just get, like, a Lubuntu um, LTE version of Ubuntu, you know, an, an LXDE version of Ubuntu, so you get Lubuntu, long-term support, and then just run snaps and flat packs and app images off of it, you've got a system that's just as stable as any, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a mainline um Ubuntu, you know, it's vanilla Ubuntu, but but runs on significantly fewer resources, I guess. Um, so you've got a lot of options there, but truth be told, I think, and I've been thinking a lot about um, the, you know, f uh, snaps and flat packs and app images these days, that, you know, once you've, w one, you know, if, if there is a time in the near future where these really take off and they become standard operating procedures for installing applications, um, then I think that the your choice of distribution will have um, not ne necessarily be entirely inconsequential, but um, it, the, the the choice will be significantly, uh, you know, it'll be sig significantly less significant to the to your to your overall um, use case, really. And you may, in fact, then decide to opt for uh, distributions that require less maintenance now that all your applications are sandboxed and snapped and flat packed and all that kind of stuff as well. I don't know. I just thought of sharing some of my thoughts on uh, distributions that I've been using over the years. Um, I did say that I was going to do a Linux distribution of the year, and I couldn't pin one down because partly they were all so similar built on the Ubuntu base, so maybe Ubuntu might be it again. Um, Solus is great, and I like that Ike, who is an absolute powerhouse in terms of developing that distribution, is now repackaging up, or is is packaging up Steam, Steam runtime into a snap with all of the the latest um, dependencies and things like that. Uh, more up to date stuff than what um, Valve and Steam have been doing, um, and packaging that up as a snap. So it could be the best way to get the Steam runtime up and running is through a snap, as well. So it's interesting to see that snaps and flat packs are available on pretty much all Linux distributions. And um, I've been using, you know, I, I occasionally use Discord from time to time. And uh, I, 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 so I'll do another video on Discord, actually rambling about Discord. But um, 
I quite like install. In order to use the video uh, conferencing feature, you need to have the installed application. Now, the installed application works great on Linux. It's an Electron application. Um, runs very similar to their website. On their website, you can just use the voice chat and the text chat. And I think in yeah, you need the proper Electron app downloaded and installed to use the um, the webcam. However, it's available on Snap. It's available on Flatpak. I think those are the only two avenues that are it's available for. And it runs on everything that I've tried. I, I'm pretty, pretty sure this year. So it runs on nearly everything, um, just by being packaged in Snap and flat packs. So I definitely think there's a way to go for it because realistically now, um, Discord um, can port an application to Linux so easily, right? First off, uh, they've got a, an Electron app. So uh, because Electron is cross-platform, Electron's done a lot of the work there as well. But then when it comes to which Linux distribution should I package for, should I just do Ubuntu and hope everyone else just helps well snaps why not snaps it's easy brave browser does snaps as well i think it's at the top of its uh readme page is how to the best way to install uh brave is is it gives you snaps above all else um and it, yeah it, it makes sense I'm, I'm really enjoying using you know the technology and looking at it and, and understanding how it works and um and it'll be interesting to see how the kind of effect that it might have on its um uh, on the on the wider Linux community. So I think that's about it for me. I'm going to wrap up today. Uh, but I would like uh, to ask you guys a question, those of you that have made it this far into the video. Uh, this channel has, has been around on social media for a while, and, and I've had accounts on various different platforms, and then I've removed them. We used to have a Reddit for this channel, but uh, after a large amount of... It, large amount of inactivity after a period of inactivity um and then reddit deciding to unopen source itself i decided to to close down the reddit um i've had twitter accounts that are, and then i've got rid of that because to be honest in a lot of cases social media when it comes to, especially in regards to this channel specifically it is often a distraction from video creation if i have to spend a lot of time on another social media uh, platform uh, you know it's generally time away from youtube and youtube takes more time than than is apparent in the uh, in in the um, in the end product. However, um, do you guys would you guys like to see this channel have a Discord server? Um, a lot of the other YouTube projects that I work with, Project Chronicle, for example, they have a Discord server. Um, Hex DSL, he has a Discord server. Discord server. There's some gaming on Linux Discord servers. Um, so. Um, I don't really know what I do. I probably um, uh, have more information about streaming on it if I was to uh, if I was to to go in there very much, uh, go in there that much. Oh, I did have an IRC room for this channel before, but um, the trouble with the IRC is that you had to be very present there. I felt like I always had to be in that room and talking to people. And after a while, um, and and you know, uh, over time as I spent you know less time each day in that room uh the number the numbers began to dwindle and uh and, and we never really had more than half a dozen people in the irc room so I, I then decided to close it in the end it was a lot of fun but irc is uh in terms of it as a social network that people spend time in it just didn't have the have the numbers but yeah if you guys are interested in discord um let me know in the comments and i'll um i'll set up a I'll set, I'll set up a room specifically for this channel because I know it's just like, you know, tacked onto the end of everyone else's room list and um, um, and I might put out some, you know, some, some more news there or, or what have you, but I probably won't be as present on it as, as I will on other things. I quite like Discord because it doesn't run on advertising revenue. There is a um, Discord Plus I, uh, the option you can have. Discord Nitro, I think it is. And you pay something like £6, $6 a month, and that's your sort of contrib contribution to the service. And I, I definitely prefer services like like, like that over ad-generating um, ones. For, like, for a few reasons. One is that um, it's more secure. Like, if you've got X number of customers... Um, then you know what your your x amount of income is going to be next month and it also your your income in january is likely to be similar to your income in somewhere like july whereas if you're doing ad revenue for example this channel january february are, pr are pretty much months where we where youtubers work for free so um uh, you know because because retail it's all about retail like who buys stuff after you know not that many people buy stuff after christmas in month um in uh in january february is is them's the breaks but then you know you get christmas to make up for it although um christmas is not always great anyway 
I think that's enough rambling on from me today. Uh, but yes, there is no, I'm afraid, uh, distribution of the year. Uh, but if you're looking for something good on the desktop, try something Ubuntu-based or Solus. That's really my recommendations these days. Or Pop! OS, Linux Mint. They're, um, truth be told, Ubuntu have got a really good base down. Uh, with the help, of course, of Debian. And stuff on top of that is um, just, you know, is... is uh, in a lot of cases, it's window dressing, and I, I say that like it's an offhand statement. Because, but uh, the Linux community is very good at doing like the ninety-five percent of the hardest work, and just leaving the five percent of of the uh, the remaining five percent of UI aesthetics, all that kind of stuff, documentation. Um, you know, leave that a bit wanting, as it were. Um, and I think that particularly Linux Mint, they're very good at making up that final 5% stretch. Ubuntu have been doing very well, but um, but they, I think, have been, you know, they're, they're, they're champions in the underlying technology. And then you've got Mint and um, and even Solus and Elementary. They're very good at tweaking the UI there. Of course, uh, Solus is an independent distribution from top to bottom. And um, i got to say, I thought that would be a lot of work, uh, more work than someone like Ike could, could cope with because it just sounds like a monumental task. But, um, you know, throughout the life of Solus so far, we've seen how certain advantages to having that full control over your software stack. So, um, yeah. Uh, interesting things are happening lessons being learned so uh, i think i'm gonna gonna wrap up there but thank you very much guys for watching uh, yet another rather rambly vlog uh, i'm gonna leave it there but thank you very much for watching until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now